All right, friends, thank you so much for joining us today for week six of our first year seminar. Um, we very much appreciate you taking the time over your lunch hour to do this. Um, I think you're really going to find the information that we go over with you today helpful, um, especially if you've been looking for an excuse to, to participate in a little bit more self-care for yourself. Uh, today, we're actually gonna show you a lot of the science behind why that's important and how that can help you to be successful as a college student. Um, so that being said, I do want to uh, explain that today the topic is going to be health, wellness, and college, um, and that is going to be how to basically make your college experience work for you, um, taking self-care and things like sleep and diet and exercise into account. Um, today we have a guest lecturer with us. Uh, Vanika Porwal, who is our STEM Partnership Manager uh, for Pre-College Programs and Undergraduate Admissions, um, is actually going to be presenting today. So you're going to get to listen to someone else other than me today. Um, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Vanika. Um, and Vanika, you can take over when you're ready. Awesome. Marky, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, hi, everybody. I just wanted to introduce myself as well. So as Marky mentioned, I'm the STEM Partnership Manager on the pre-college team in undergraduate admissions. Um, so my work at this point is mostly with um, high school students and, and exposing them to STEM, right? And how, how great STEM is and what it can do for them in the future and then connecting them to opportunities at Illinois Tech. Um, but in my past life, so just right before this role at Illinois Tech, um, I was the student life officer at a liberal arts college. Um, and it was a really cool, you know, cool opportunity. And my, my focus was on students' health and well-being and how they transition to lead a successful university life. Um, and so that's kind of, Marky and I were talking, and that's how I was um, pulled into you know, to this presentation. I'm, I'm so pumped that I get a, a chance to talk to you today. Um, so as Marky mentioned, our focus today is on health and well-being and how that relates to your academic success as a college student. So, you know, two main things we're trying to do here. So as the first thing is we'll talk about one theory in particular of human needs um, and how when you meet your needs successively, you can promote your well-being and set yourself up for academic success. So it, you know, it's important to understand the framework for that so you can truly be successful in this endeavor. Um, and the second thing is we'll talk a little bit about your bodily stress response, right? And so when you are stressed, what happens to you? And as a result, how does that impact your education? Okay, and uh, Marky and I are collaborating on this. Marky's actually driving our, our presentation. So I'm gonna say, um, I'll just give Marky a heads up to move to the next slide. Awesome, so um, you know, the first thing we'll do in this session is I'm gonna ask you to reflect on a prompt. Um, it's you know, about the way you feel and around health and well-being, and that'll set the stage for us, right? And then we'll move into this theory of um, the hierarchy of needs. So thinking about your needs progressively as a human. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk about best practices to promote your well-being. So what are some concrete things you, should, you can focus on doing to make sure you're doing your best, staying well? Um, and then at that point, I'm going to pass the torch back to Marky to talk a little bit more about what's up next for you uh, as in, in your first year experience. Okay, so for this, for your reflection, I want you all to, um, you know, humor me for a second, close your eyes, um, and just put yourself in this, this space, this mental space. Think about a time when, and Marky, could you hit the, the next button? Perfect, thank you. So I want you to put yourself in this headspace, right? Um, you stayed up really late, this, this can be in high school, it can be recently in your college experience. You stayed up really late to work on a school assignment. And as a result, you didn't get enough sleep. So, you know, you think about you're studying all night or you had a, a practice or a club or something that went really late. Um, then you had to push everything back and you, you stayed up really late, right? And you didn't get as much sleep as you wanted to get. The question here for you to think about is how did you feel the next day? What did that feel like physically? You know, what were the responses, the things that in your body, how did your body respond? And also emotionally, what did that feel like, you know, from uh, when you're thinking about yourself as in a full scope? So not just the physical feeling, but also the emotional feeling. 
okay? And I'm not going to ask anyone to, to share any of this out. I just want you to keep this in mind as we talk through the rest of the presentation, all right? So, Marky, we can move on to the next slide. So, as I mentioned, today we're talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, so, Maslow is a, was a psychologist, and his question was really, you know, what, what conditions need to be in place for humans to reach their full potential? So it, he called this self-actualization. So the, the name of this theory is actually the theory of self-actualization. So, you know, he was wondering what kinds of things need to be in place for humans successfully in order for them to be creative, right? If you're thinking about it in terms of school to get good grades, to reach their, you know, their academic goals, what kinds of things need to be in place? Um, so he proposed this based on years of research um, and also other psychologists and scientists research. He proposed this pyramid that you see on this slide. So at the most basic level, the, the bottom two here um, are phys physiological and safety needs. So these are things around your bodily functioning, right? So food and water, um, staying warm if it's cold, getting enough rest, um, you know, procreation, that kind of thing. Um, and safety and security, so being able to stay safe from predators. And you can imagine humans a long time ago, you know, if there were threats from the environment, how did we work together to, to stay safe from those threats? So those are the basic needs. Once those things are met, right, and here's the main, the main point from this is, once you've met those physiological and safety needs, only then do things like intimate relationships, for example, with close others become important. So next up from safety and security, you see belonging, belongingness and love, right? So this is your friendships, your family, um, the connections that you develop with people. Once you have those things and you continue moving up on this pyramid, that's when you can focus on achievement. So you think about, um, you know, getting elected to a, you know, a leadership position in a club or you're on a sports team and you're, you're focusing on, on winning games um, or you're earning good grades, right? And so once all those things are met, that's when you reach the top of this pyramid, which is re realizing your full creative potential. So as a student, you know, that might be earning your degree. Um, as I mentioned before, it could be earning good grades, right? So your, your full creative potential is at the top. And the idea behind all this is unless you have those meets met needs met uh, that are lower on the pyramid, that are more basic, you can't reach the needs at the top. Um, and Marky, we can hit the next slide. So, you know, this, this might be your question. Why does this matter? How does this relate to my time as a first year student? Um, and the, the simple answer here is that right now, as a first year student, you are, you know, holistically in a time of transition. So, almost everything you're doing environmentally is new, right? So it's important to pay attention to each of these successive segments of the pyramid. So, you know, you're paying attention to your well-being and all the different facets of that so that you can do your best as a student and reach your academic goals, whatever they are. Um, so what we're gonna do in the next few slides um, is we'll, we'll talk a little bit about each of these different categories, right? And, um, you know, I'll ask for you in the chat, if you think of other things that might fit these categories, just drop them in the chat, okay, as we're going along so everybody can see what those are. Um, so the lowest one here is physiological. You can see that's the, the bottom of uh, the pyramid, the most, one of the most basic needs. As I mentioned on the previous slide, that relates to your bodily functioning, right? So then what, this is important for college students because, um, you know, college students get less sleep. There's research on this. As you do your schoolwork, you have more and more commitments, you're more independent. Um, college students just are, are sleeping less on average. Um, is this true for anyone? Can anyone just drop in the chat, just say yes uh, or me, um, if you find that you are getting less sleep now? Okay. So I see a handful of, of yeses coming in. Um, and that could be for a number of reasons. And, and some of those things are listed here. So, you know, college students, a big, a big time of transition, one of the main things might be in, in your life. 
um, you know, you, you're, you're doing things for the first time. So cooking and preparing food um, is something for the first time you might be doing if you're, if you're living alone, like in an apartment, if you're in a dorm, you're going to the dining hall, you're making your own dining decisions. All of these things, they seem simple, but they, they take time and effort, right? Um, you know, you're, as a student, you're paying attention for the first time to eating healthy, maybe in a way that you didn't have to before because someone else, by and large, was influencing your diet, right? But now you're going into the dining hall, you have all these different options, um, and, you know, you can, you can choose what to eat, you can choose what works for you, and then make sure that you have a balanced diet, right? A healthy diet. Um, for the first time, for lots of students when they enter college, um, you know, they might be exposed to alcohol and other substances that they weren't exposed to in high school, right? And, you know, I, I'm of the firm opinion that we should be very realistic um, and, and keep it real in these conversations. And this is a reality of college life, right? Um, and so for the first time, you might have to make decisions around using substances or being offered substances that you didn't have access to before. Um, and so those are decisions related to your physiological needs that are new for college students. Um, this is a big one. So this is something I saw in my, my work with first year students and, and as a student life officer was, you know, now that you are 18, for the most part, you're legally an adult, lots of students are going through a phase where they are responsible for their own medication for the first time. So whereas you might have had, for example, a parent um, or a guardian kind of helping you out and, and with your medication before, uh, now that's on you, right? So all of these are changes related to your physiological needs and your maintenance of them that it's really important to pay, pay attention to first in order to stay healthy. So, you know, getting enough sleep, eating healthy, making sure you're um, making good decisions around the, the, the things you do and use, um, and, and also around your medicine. So, Marky, you want to hit the next one? Okay, so safety and security. As I mentioned on that first slide, um, the point of this bucket of needs here um, is about just in general, you know, your mental security, right? And also then physically, if you think of hunter, hunters and gatherers, your safety from predation. Um, and although, you know, we don't live in that same hunter-gatherer context now, a lot of those same decisions, you can, you can think about how those translate into your present day. Right, so for first year students, here's another question for you to, to drop um, into the chat. How many of you have just felt uncertain or confused about the virtual school environment that you're in right now? You can just say me or I have or something like that. Awesome, thank you, Zach. Somewhat. Yeah, so, you know, I wanted to include that in the presentation because I, th I think it's really important to mention. So your certainty and in, in feeling confident in the way that you are attending and participating in, in your school and university life is part of your security, right? Mental security is a big piece um, of that. So that's an adjustment as well. Um, you know, if you are at a point and we're at a point as a society when it's safe, um, and you'll be going off campus or participate in whatever social activity, right? Thinking about how you make healthy and safe decisions around doing that, you know, things like traveling in groups, right? You might be leaving campus to go off campus um, for, for something. Um, all of that is important. It's around your, your safety and security. You, you might be living alone, right? And this might not necessarily be now as a first year student, because you live in a res hall environment or you know you might be home with your family right now but let's say think down the line a little bit right so you're you know you're a junior you're a senior and you're living off campus um, and you are living in an apartment right and so all of the safety and security things that come around maintaining your your living right in this this new space where you are the responsible adult um, managing your finances so actually statistically this is one of the issues that college students struggle with the most around their well-being is that, you know, for the, for the first time, you might be managing the purse strings a little bit when it comes to all the different things you might, might need to purchase. You might be financially independent for the first time. Um, that might be true for some students and not for others, right? So there's security around um, how you manage your money. And then the last thing I have on here is, you know, you are 
legally adults, right? And the university will treat you as such, society will treat you, treat you as such. And so your safety and your security and your behavior around being an adult is very important. So, you know, now you have a university code of conduct that you're, you're looking to follow. Um, you're also responsible as an adult in the eyes of the law. Um, all of these things relate to, tra to your transition around safety and security in college. Marky, could you hit the next slide? Awesome, thank you. So belonging, belongingness and, and love. So you, if we, we keep building up the pyramid, right? The first part is physiological, so your bodily response. Uh, we talked about all the different changes that go into that um, and all the different ways to focus on your needs, what's important there. Safety and security, so around you know, your physical safety, your emotional safety, um, all of those things are encompassed within your safety needs. Belongingness and love, so once you have those two things, then you start thinking about your relationships, right? And it's possible to think about how to make new friends. Um, who here is living away from home for the first time? Can you drop that into the chat? Awesome, thank you. Yeah, so, so it seems like it's a common thread for a lot of you, right? That you are living, living away from home for the first time. You're in an entirely new environment around new people. You know, you're negotiating these relationships with them as an adult for the first time. Um, you know, I can speak from my, my own personal experience. I know it was pretty jarring for me to go from high school to college and then have to make a whole new group of friends in college, right? I spent a lot of time being homesick, um, has anyone felt homesick before? Can you also just drop it in the chat so far this year? Absolutely. And I see someone, I see that uh, Marky wrote here, you know, you are navigating new relationships in a pandemic um, and social connection the way you might traditionally have that on a college or university campus, that's different now, right? Um, so all of those things are important to keep in mind. Um, and homesickness, you know, if anyone has ever felt homesick before, that is a manifestation of this need not being met, right? You know, you're in a new environment. Um, you're tied to those close intimate relationships that you had before. And that intimacy, that sharing that you had before, you haven't yet achieved that in your new environment. Um, Exploring new interests is a big one, too. So, you know, you're finding, and I know Marky has used these words before, you're finding your tribe, right? You're finding the people who like the same things you do, want to do the same activities you, you like. Um, all of those things are around your belongingness and love needs. Um, and Marky, I think we're ready to move on to the next one. Awesome. Thank you. So then just kind of, you know, continuing building up this pyramid here, right? We've met your, you, we've talked about your bodily needs. We've talked about your safety and security needs. We've talked about your, you know, needs around relationships. And then adding to that, that's when you're able to look at achievement. Um, and so, you know, Marky shared this with me that sometimes, uh, it, or that, that students were mentioning, it was sometimes difficult to motivate yourself in this virtual environment. Is that true for anybody? Can you drop that in the chat? A handful of people have said yes, right? Because you, you just don't have that same connection that you'd have, you know, if you were fully in person in your classes, fully in person with all your classmates. Um, and so the way you'd be able to build off each other and motivate yourself, that's a little bit more difficult to do. It's a little bit easier to be disengaged in a virtual environment. Um, and that's about achievement as well. So, you know, when I think about achievement, I think about all the different things you're going to do as a first year student and throughout your college career and even beyond that when you are um, working to accomplish something. So whether that's, you know, now it might be picking, picking, switching your major to something that feels right or um, you know, is, is in your, your area of interest, uh, progressing in your major as you, as you go through college. All these things are about achievement. Um, keeping up your GPA, and that's all about motivation as well. You know, how are you maintaining those excellent study habits so that 
you keep up your grades, um, which will continue to affect you then down the line as well. Um, achievement can also be things like, you know, are you looking for campus employment? Um, are you looking for internships? How, how do you apply and, and land those? Uh, that's around achievement. And then on campus, right, if you're participating in a club, for example, um, are you, you know, maybe you'll, you'll think down the line, you want to be on the executive board of that club. So that type of leadership role is also a measure of achievement, right? That is only possible once you have these other needs in place and these other needs met. And so, Marky, I think we can move on to the next one. Awesome. And so then the last piece here is about self-actualization. So Maslow thought about this as reaching your full potential. Um, and in, so in, you know, an educational environment, reaching your full potential means so many things around your academic trajectory, right? So earning your degree. Um, you might be looking to go to graduate school after college. Uh, so applying for and getting into graduate school. Um, you know, you might go and do the Peace Corps for a few years, right? That's part of, that would be part of achieving that academic mission, um, getting a job after college, right? All of those things are what Maslow would consider self-actualizing in education. And, you know, other theorists have also talked about that. They've talked about how, how if education, if your university life was the same hierarchy of needs, at the top would be graduation. So that's kind of what you're striving for throughout your time. Um, and, you know, the point of all this, Marky, if you want to hit the next one, this is, honestly, this is, this is the point of this session here. Without taking care of the most basic things, your bodily needs, your, your safety and your security, making friends, making sure you have those things in place, without doing that, it's impossible to get all the way through um, to achieving that educational goal. So just keep that in mind, Okay. Um, that's why we're talking about this now, how important it is to focus on your well-being in the most basic sense. And that's what we're talking about this week and next week as well. Mark, do you want to hit the next slide? So this is, this is the last slide that I'll share with all of you, and then I'm going to pass the torch back to Marky. Um, Marky and I were talking about, well, in order to meet those most basic needs, what are some best practices? What can students look to do that are, are research-backed practices to help them be healthy and safe. Um, the first one is to get enough sleep. And, you know, I saw a lot of you dropped in the chat that you're, you're getting less sleep now, right? And that's just a reality of college life. Um, I would suggest to you really focus on setting a schedule where you are getting enough sleep because we know from research, right, that if you are sleep deprived, it diminishes your capacity to be able to go farther up on those and on those hierarchy of needs, right? So um, you'll have diminished attention. I have mood and performance up here. If you have a diminished mood, you know, you're gonna be a little snappy with your friends, right? You might do less well on, um, you know, a test that you have the next day. So getting enough sleep is really important. Um, and that's where that reflection scenario from the beginning came into play here as well. You can think about what that feels like and how that might be different, you know, if you were well rested. Um, the second thing here is to work out, right, um, to exercise, because um, physical activity, whether, it, you know, it's as simple as just walking around, um, whatever it is, just get up and get moving, actually has this really cool brain-boosting power. Um, and there's studies that show it can help you be more alert. Um, if you exercise, you have increased blood flow. It can also help with your memory, right? So if you're working on moving up and meeting those different levels of needs, uh, you know, around schooling, for example, if you get regular physical activity, you're likely to have increased memory capacity, right? And, and to remember more of the things that you're studying. So it's really important to do that too. And then the third one um, is around eating healthy. So, you know, um, I, I know you all know this already. You like, you think, about, think about your diet and think about how you keep that balanced, um, eating everything in, in moderation. So you're making sure you get all the nutrients you need. That'll help you meet that, the lowest levels of those pyramids. Um, so you can then go on, you think about it, be a better friend, be a better you know, student organization member, and ultimately achieve your academic goals. Um, thank you so much. These were the three uh, main tips that I had, the main, main best practices for you. Um, and now I'm going to pass the torch back to Marky. 
All right. Thank you so much, Vanika. We very much appreciate you joining us. And Vanika will be back again next week um, to talk about this in a little bit more depth. Um, one thing that I would love to add to this particular slide before we move on is I think that if we were to add, you know, a number four to this in terms of best practices, it would go right back to what Lisa Darren Grossman talked to us about with the connection cure. And that would be, you know, finding that tribe, you know, making social connections. And remember that that doesn't necessarily have to be these long drawn out social interactions. You know, she talked about micro moments during her keynote and how just, you know, a, a less than a five minute interaction with a stranger where you actually have an authentic connection can do so much for the chemistry of your body, for your mood, for your brain. So not only should you be focusing on getting enough sleep and exercise and eating healthy, but finding social connections, finding that tribe is also going to add a lot in terms of your emotional, your physical health that's ultimately going to contribute to your success as a student. So we would definitely encourage you to consider those four things moving forward and to definitely just understand that, you know, self-care, I think oftentimes in the United States especially, is kind of considered a luxury, um, you know, something that, that we do when we have time. Um, but the research is clear. Self-care really shouldn't be optional. It should be something that is prioritized in order to make sure that we are as productive and as successful as we can be. So as students, you know, learn to draw boundaries, you know, learn to say, this is my time to sleep. Um, and I think that the more that you practice that, typically the easier that it gets over time. It was something that I didn't learn to do well until I was an adult. Um, and I certainly wish that I think that I would have had that knowledge uh, as a college student. So with that being said, my friends, let's talk about some upcoming events, reflection opportunities, and next steps. Um, so in terms of the upcoming schedule, just remember that this week, there's no small discussion group with your mentors. So from, for the rest of the semester, we're going to be going to a bi-weekly schedule with your small discussion groups just knowing that your class schedule is probably heating up a little bit and you may need a little bit more time to do things. So no small discussion group this week. Um, you will have small discussion group next week, the week of October 5th. Um, the week of October 12th, I know that that's when a lot of midterms are taking place on campus. So we've made sure that there's no first year seminar scheduled for that Tuesday um, in order to give you time to focus and to do what you need to do. So we will have the regular seminar next week, but then the week of the 12th during midterm Terms, no seminar. Um, and then the week of October 19th, uh, the first year seminar and the small groups will resume. So it's going to be that every other week schedule, like I said, for small groups. Um, in addition, we do have a first year experience supplemental webinar series that is kicking off tomorrow. I will show you the dates for that on your next slide. So tomorrow, uh, if you're free at 1250, uh, we are going to have a presentation from the Student Health and Wellness Center talking about all of the different services that they can provide and how to access those services. I think especially right now, especially you know struggling during this pandemic, um, this one's gonna be especially important because not only can they address physical health, but they can also provide a lot of counseling support for emotional health as well. Um, and then we have the Academic Resource Center, Campus Life and Student Activities, and Study Abroad that are scheduled for future sessions as well. So if you're free and you're interested in learning more about those things, please join us. Um, but those sessions are completely optional. Um, after today, I want you to have an opportunity to reflect a little bit on the conversation that we just had with Vanika about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and how essentially meeting the needs at the bottom of the pyramid is what enables you to basically perform to the best of your ability and to experience that self-actualization. So this week, I would like you to reflect on the following things. Number one, reflect on your personal habits related to well-being, things like sleep, exercise, eating, self-care. Do you prioritize self-care? Um, how do these habits impact your mood, your ability to focus, and your motivation on a daily basis? Um, what do you find challenging about prioritizing well-being over academics? And what steps do you think you could take to ensure that you are taking care of your basic needs moving forward? If this is something that you struggle with, I highly recommend that you have a conversation with your mentor about it during an individual check-in. You know, the mentors have been here for at least a year at this point, and they have probably done some practice with this them, uh, themselves. Um, in addition, join us next week, please. Uh, that's going to be on October 6th from 1250 to 120. Vanika is going to join us again to share more information about the impact of well-being as a college student on both academic and personal success.
And my friends, as always, if you need anything, if you have questions and you just aren't sure where to go or where your resources are, you are always welcome Contact to email me. me. Um, I'm hearing a little bit of sound in the background. So if you're not muted, please mute. So if you need anything at all, um, you are certainly welcome to email me at mroads1 at iit.edu. Um, in the event that you need help, don't forget that your mentor is also a great resource for you there. So thank you so much for joining us, friends. Um, absolutely kick butt, butt this week. Um, if you need anything at all, reach out to us, and we will see you next week for the last seminar before midterms. Thanks so much, and we will see you next week.